Hey, this is Audrey. I'm going to give you a quick and easy thinking mats refresher. Um, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic, which is great if you have an awesome microphone, which I do not right now. So hang in there. I know the sound quality is terrible, but this is better than you having to come in a room and sit and listen to this. You can go at your own speed. You can watch it and play it back later. I will be uploading the PowerPoint to the Weebly and to the P-Drive, so you can view it later. So these are the eight thinking maps. The first one is a circle map. You put the word in the middle and then you define what it is around it. You can always divide it out and make it like a freer diagram if you want to. You can put what it is on this side, what it's not, do an illustration, and um, just anything that would help a kid remember what the word means. Um, a bubble map, you only use adjectives in the circle around because it is describing quality. So you could put a character and a story in the middle and all the words that describe that character. Um, you could put, you know, what an integer is and all the words that describe an integer, as long as they're adjectives. A double bubble is like two bubbles put together, where two bubble maps put together, where you could have um, Miss Allen and Miss Jones, and you could compare us. Um, Miss Allen's brunette, Miss Jones is a blonde. Um, Miss Jones is in school right now. Miss Allen is not. Um, Miss Jones is the assistant principal. Miss Allen is an instructional coach. But we both work at Glide Middle School, and we both are mothers of three. So you compare and contrast, and the similarities go in the middle, and then the differences go on the outside. A tree map you could use for literally anything. Um, if you don't have one in your lesson plans, the go-to is the tree map. You can classify basically any piece of um, text or information. A brace map is part to whole. So we could do Glide Middle School and we could do the different departments and then within those departments we have teachers and we could do that. So it's part to whole. Um, a flow map is great if you think of how to do something or the steps of an algebra problem or a math problem. It's sequential, the order of events, um, like the period, a time period or you know what led up to a war. A multi-flow map is cause and effect. These things cause one big event to happen which resulted in these other things happening. And then analogies are put in a bridge map. So you could put on the top um, the holy um, books of Christianity, like the Bible, and then the Torah for Jews, and then you could put churches, and then you could put, um, if you were doing Islam, you could put mosque on the bottom. So you could have the three types of religion, and you could build three bridge maps on top of each other and then put the relating factor if they're places of worship or holy books or things like that. So there, those are the eight thinking maps that we want you guys to put in your lesson plan. So go in more in depth for each one. A circle map. Um, all of these examples are going to be based around food because who can't relate to food? Everybody loves food. Um, so a circle map. Circle map is all about vocabulary prior knowledge, pre-writing, brainstorming, details of topics, author's purpose. You can do any of those things with a circle map because you're just brainstorming everything you know about food. Um, so there's food in the middle and everything we want to make sure we include in our writing or facts or details or key information that we want to remember about food. A bubble map. Um, bubble maps, again, are for adjectives. You could use these for character descriptions, historical figures. Um, ways to describe governments or economic types, things that kids observe while they're doing a scientific experiment. You could do connotation or denotation, synonyms and anonyms, all those things you could do inside a bubble map. A double bubble, I gave the great example of me and Miss Jones, but here's one about apples and oranges, so you have the similarities on the inside and the differences on the outside, and that's called a double bubble. Um, it's a lot like a how you would use a Venn diagram, just in a different format. A tree map is all about classifying information. You could do the parts of speech, text structure, sentence types, biomes, types of energies, types of governments, econ, different cultures that you're studying with religion and geography. You could do like terms in math. You could do X and Y. You could do functions. Um, any of those things would be great for classifying in tree maps. Brace maps are whole to part, um, sentence structures, parts of equations, parts of cells, 
things that make up a biome, things that make up religions, governments, economics, all of those things that make up one whole part, the different parts that make one whole, could be shown in a brace map. I wish you guys could see me talking with my hands as if you could see it. Um, a flow map is for um, sequential information, so the plot of a story, historical events, the process or cycles in science, a multi-step problem in math, um, evolution of characters in a story, how they end up starting as one way or ending up as another way, all those things would be great. And you can see you can also put little details down below. So if you are doing something in a story, there may be one huge thing that happens. You could put what happens to each character within that part of the book underneath the one large box. A multi-flow map is for cause and effect. So a balance of food from the food pyramid or, and food selected are low in sugar um, causes a meal to be healthy. And the effect of having a healthy meal is you have more energy and a stronger body and maybe more courage to get in a bathing suit. And then these we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, last is something the kids really need to know before they take the SAT, GRE, things like that. And that's analogy. So here the relating factor is are a good source of. So if you read it like this, that makes sense. Oranges are a good source of vitamin C, just as nuts are a good source of protein, just as whole grains are a good source of fiber. Um, what's the relationship between an orange and vitamin C might be the question that's in the book, and then the kids show their knowledge of that question at the end of the chapter by making a bridge map to show an analogy. So a super important thing when you're doing thinking maps is that you teach the kids why you're using that thinking map. You don't just say, hey, everybody make a tree map. You say, okay, today we're going to be um, classifying information that goes with the types of bombs we're studying about. What would be the best thing for us to use if we're going to do a thinking map? And then hopefully the kids hear the word classify and automatically think tree map. So once we have the thinking maps down, we are literally going to draw a rectangle or a square around the paper and we're going to frame their thinking. So this is a tree map. Um, and these are the three things that you can do within a frame shown in a um, tree map. So um, where did you get the information from your map? If you were going to um, show that, you would have the kids maybe do that in green Sharpie. So the information sources that they got. So that might be a certain website. So here I use the textbook, A Language of Learning. That might be the textbook, um, anywhere that they got this information. And they would show that around the thinking map, outside the thinking map in green ink. What is influencing the information on your map? Like point of view, what point of view is represented? What EQ are they answering? Um, things like that you would put in blue ink. And then something I love the kids to do in red ink around is so what, so why. So what did you learn today? What was the standard? And so why is it important? What conclusion can you draw? And that way if you're doing something like a science lab or um, some kind of task in math or a writing assignment in any other class, you have the kids go ahead and do that higher level of thinking by drawing a conclusion. So, and you would do that in red ink. So the information's in green. Um, I'm sorry, this isn't color coordinated. Um, what influences your map, You like the EQ that they're answering, the point of view, that would be in blue. So here, here's what's influencing my map. We've got to cover the standards. It's got to be rigorous. And we need to get the kids ready for 21st century skills. And then what, what reflecting the kids do after they do the thinking map would go in a frame of reference outside the map. Now my next... Um, little ditty that I'm going to do, my, my next <coughs> um, screencast-o-matic, I'm going to actually show you examples and I'm going to show you how you would take two or three thinking maps and turn it into a jam up writing assignment. So I know this one was kind of lame, I didn't make any jokes, um, but hopefully you watched it to the end and it makes you want to watch the next one and hopefully you want to try out screencast-o-matic um, you cringe when you hear your own voice. But other people don't cringe nearly as much as you do. Make sure you ask me if you have questions. If you just have no idea how to incorporate thinking maps, I would just love to come in and help you do a lesson and try to put one of these at least a week 
and your lesson plans. Hopefully if you saw this today and saw the examples, you, you can think of ways you can incorporate that and it doesn't sound too scary. Okay, thank you. Please see me with questions.